Hey y'all, Barley here. And this will be a short video because I fixed it. Those who've been watching the channel for about the last week and a half know that after uh, the 1.08 version of the um, Microsoft um, Asobo SNH ATR came out, uh, that update broke a lot of a, a few things. The thrust reversers have been a pain in my hide because I haven't been able to do. I want to do some short field stuff. I might take like the ATR 42 and want to go land at a tiny dirt strip somewhere because um, I think that'd be a fun trip, a fun landing, and a fun video to record. Well, until I get reversers working, that's not gonna happen because all I have is tow brakes. So before, uh, well, before 108, they worked fine. Now, uh, before I made this fix, uh, what they would do is you put it in reverse, and I think it was feathering the props. I can't I, it because it changed the <clears throat> the thrust noise to where I thought maybe it was reversing, but then when I go back and look at the video, I can tell that reverse was not actually kicking in. Also, your the throttles didn't go into the reverse section of the th quadrant. Well, now they do. And I left the tail prop off so that the plane would kick back so you could tell we're in reverse. And now I'm putting it back in idle. And immediately when back in idle, the reverse comes off. Now it takes a little while for the turbines to spin back down. But because the plane leveled, you know that it came off right away. And you can tell the the the, the power level lever triggers, triggers activate as you would expect. And now we're clearly in, um, st you know, forward, if you will. But you can go back and forth. No active checklist. And it works over and over and over, no problem. This is with the Bravo throttle quadrant, but um, if you're willing to dive into SPAD.next and you're, for, you're flying the ATR and you're using external equipment, you're willing to, you, you're already using either SPAD.next or maybe X's and O's. I don't know, or I think that's not actually what it's called, it's but the other one. <laughs> Um, I don't use that, uh, and I haven't learned it, so I don't have a, a solution for you. But maybe look, watching what I did with SPAD.next, it'll give you a hint of how to fix it for the Axis and O's. That's what it's called, Axis and O's. Um, as soon as I figure out where my SPAD.next screen is somewhere. Anybody see it? Um, there it is. Okay. So first on the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, or joystick of your choice... For me, buttons 24 and 25 are what, um, so here, I'll put it. When 24 is held, or 25, that's what indicates reverse, okay? Now, the reason I did this is, look at this count. What? Well, I'll do it again. When it's held, it repeats this over and over and over, so I can't put the reverser code in here, or it'll sit there and toggle reverse thrust on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off which isn't what you want um instead all i'm doing is saying okay just set a local variable so i made a new local variable um if you don't know how to do that here i'll just add a quick event so i picked button held but i'm not going to use that right now because i've already got that event so pretend this says button held <laughs> and then um i said i wanted it to uh change a data value and then I did new local variable and I made reverse one. Okay, so you just create it and then I set it as a default value of zero neutral. Okay. Well, that's how I created it. So now we'll go in and look at fairly simple. So set local reverse one to one. That's basically saying that the reversers for throttle one are on, but it doesn't change anything. It's just a variable, it's just internal use. And then when the button is released, I could have actually put the release code here, but to be consistent, it's the coder in me. Um, to be consistent, I just said, no, set local reverse one to negative one, meaning that get out of reverse. And then we'll eventually set reverse one back to zero once it is neither in reverse or coming out of reverse. Um, so then we go to the script panel here, where we can do all sorts of scripting, which I have. And then for reverse thrust, whoop. okay, 
So this is where when reverse one is set to one, that's when the throttles are in the reverse detente. That button's being held and reverse one is set to one. Well, this will fire just once. So I set throttle reverse um, thrust toggle, and this is a simulation event. Um, the way you do that is you would, um, let's see, we'll just do a conditional action. That's what these are. And then I would have up here, I did where local, let's go find it. I'll show you how I did it all. Set local reverse one, um, or it, this is a condition. Uh, if it equals one, right, then it will fire off these actions, right? And then adding an action, I'm using send simulation event because that's what those are, right? So then you just do a search for throttle, reverse, and you want toggle, not hold. This doesn't do anything. You need this one. This is the event that the plane responds to, not this one. It used to be this one, I believe. But anyway, so it's the toggle. So now that I've shown you how to do that, I'm gonna, I am gonna—I don't want that extra thing screwing my stuff up. So go into the event, and it's sending these events. It's sending the toggle, which basically turns reverse on. And you can see here it's saying reverse one does not equal one. Set the the toggle to say we are in reverse and then send throttle one full and throttle two full and I you know what I could probably replace these with uh, that we, the event channel is noisy enough I don't need to send two events when one will do so we'll delete that there we go send throttle full what this does is this puts it into the reverse detente. This picks up those triggers and moves it back into the reverse detente. And this says full reverse. Right? So, um, now using that one less event. There we go. You can see reverse reverse over on the left. Over here, you saw the reverse reverse come up. The plane tilts back. You can see it in the artificial horizon right here. Now, when I move it forward, it goes to idle, idle. And the plane comes back to to a normal position. So that's um, that's what fixes that. Now this it takes a lot more code to get right. This is coming out of reverse. So you notice back on save this back on the Bravo throttle when the button is released. That's button twenty four is released. Set local reverse to negative one. Right. So I want to come out of reverse, and that's what that that's what that signal means. That flag, if you will. When we hit negative one, it will run this once and exactly once. It will send the throttle cut event, which cuts power to both throttles because we don't want, you know, if we're coming out of reverse, we would go to idle. Then we turn, we toggle the reverse thrust again, take it out of reverse. Then we send the throttle increase event, what this does, and then we wait half a second. And then we send the increase event again, and then the throttle cut event, so it goes back to neutral. To basically get the, the plane to realize that you want to not just turn the reversers off, but actually return to forward and neutral, forward idle thrust, you have to kind of kick it twice and then cut it off. Otherwise, it'll get stuck in a weird place. And then I set the local reverse variable back to zero, meaning don't go to reverse, don't come out of reverse, you're fine. Don't do anything. And when it's zero, uh, these aren't evaluating, right? So it's not wasting any time because it's neither of those two things. And that's it. That's it. It took me days of hunting events and trying to figure out which ones were going to do what I wanted. Um, I guess I could pull that the whole thing up, and I am going to publish these. Um, if I don't I haven't published anything yet, so. Uh, I'll, I'll publish these, but you can see them on the screen. Screenshot it. Pause the video. That's what you need. It's not super complicated. Uh, go into the event. It's just like you saw it. It's just send the throttle cut event when we're coming out. Toggle reverse off. Throttle uh, increase, and that's to basically get the throttles to the neutral point. Then it waits half a second, and then increase again to kind of push it forward to nudge it. And then throttle cut to bring it back to idle, which is where you'd want it. And then after that, you have full control and you can do whatever you want with the with the power levers. 
<coughs> and uh, the first screen, just in case you didn't get it. And you don't want to go back. Oh, we're done with you. Is real simple. You're just setting a local variable to either one or negative one using the button held or button released events. Um, and you can set it for either one. I mean, you're never going to put one engine in reverse and not the other. So if you wanted to do that, then you would need to program, uh, you know, each of these and then have a reverse one and a reverse two variable. And I started with that and I think I'm never going to use one engine in reverse and not the other. Uh, so I'm not going to I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, and if I ever need it, then yeah, I'll have to go and use a reverse two variable for 25. But right now, both 24 and 25 will do the same thing. So if either one gets back there, it's going to do that. Um, and then if you did want to do that, you would have to come over to the script panel and you'd have to have, you know, uh, two sets of these. One for reverse one in and out and un copy this. And then instead of using the throttle cut, you'd have to use throttle one cut, throttle two cut. And you'd have to use throttle one increase and throttle two increase. You have to separate them. So one set of this code would be throttle one cut increment all that and then another copy would have to be throttle two and all that like i said i'm never i, I don't see a, a, a situation where i would need to reverse one engine and not the other uh i'd always reverse them together even if i'm using differential thrust reverse isn't going to be part of that equation uh this thing turns on a dime at, at low speed there's just no reason to ever do that but that's it it's fixed it's totally fixed. I to I promised you a short video. I've shown you how to do it in SPAD.next. Um, if you have a Bravo throttle. If you don't, this code will still control the plane. What's going to be different is you're going to have a different device here. And you're going to have to figure out what buttons or whatever signals for your joystick or whatever controller throttle you're using. Um, you're going to have to figure out what signals... You know, it sends what button it pushes or axis or whatever. You want it to signal reverse thrust, and then you can use this. But the code will work with any throttle out there. You'll just have to figure out how do you want to tell the code that I'm going into reverse, which is what I'm using button held here for, or coming out of reverse, which I'm using button released. And you may want to use a button toggle and have it toggle between one and negative one or something like that. But that's up to you. So that's why I separated the signal, the flag, the semaphore, whatever you want to call it, from the code that actually performs the actions so that this will be identical regardless of what tool you're using what uh throttle you're using or whatever <coughs> and the only thing that will change is what you're using to change this value and then the rest of it will work just as you saw and I am not using a button to toggle you, it literally is so when I pull the throttles back that's what that's what you get that button holds see that's that's what does it if you liked the fix please like the video uh if you want to see more like this please subscribe barley out <laughs>